Hi everyone, you're watching France 24. We're going to cross live to Berlin. The German Chancellor Olaf Scholz welcoming Emmanuel Macron amid the spiraling tension over Ukraine. Ich will gerne alle Unterstützung zusagen und gleichzeitig beginnt unsere G7 Präsidentschaft. Es ist gut, wenn wir diese beiden Aufgaben zusammenführen und unsere G7 Presidency starting in Germany. So therefore, it is good to reconcile these different missions. What we want is a Europe that is strong and sovereign. We want an international order which is just. Fair, and which allows the promotion of economic growth, the fight against climate change, and quite obviously we wish to fight against the pandemic and improve the health situation in the world. Germany and France will be working hand in hand in order to meet these objectives. France uh, has uh, the president of, uh, president of the Council of the European Union, and during the March uh, informal meeting, we'll be talking about growth and investment. We've already done preparatory work, uh, fruitful, within the framework of uh, the European recovery. And uh, the digital transition is very important, as well as the fight against climate change. What we want to do is to modernize our industry in such a way as uh, to ensure that prosperity and the fight against climate change be uh, Natürlich gibt es viele andere Fragen, über die carried out together werden. and the 55 uh, package of the Commission. We wish uh, to deal with a fair uh, number of questions uh, that are on our agenda. We want to defend the democracy, the rule of law, and we wish uh, to buttress confidence. And these are the points that uh, we'll be talking about in the course of the days to come. And how do you fight Europa against climate change? National measures must be coordinated with uh, those which are international and Europe has put forward the idea of a CO2 border compensation mechanism, uh, and we've also launched the idea of a climate club. All these themes we wish to deal with together, and what counts for us is that the European policy be anchored in the international actions. How must one act in the face of the very serious situation along the Ukrainian border? You know that there are a large number of troops that are stationed at the frontier, at the border. And what we want to do is our very best to make sure that the situation doesn't evolve negatively. Some fear it, and we expect Russia to take measures in order to arrive at a de-escalation, and we all agree to say that military aggression would have uh, very serious consequences. That is the reason for which we believe that bilateral cooperation is extremely useful, bilateral, of course, but also within the framework of the European Union as well as international. All of this is something that we will carry out together. Now, with regard to the Normandy format, uh, Germany and France have uh, very important missions to undertake within this framework. And I am very happy that we'll be able to meet in the beginning of the year in order to discuss European themes and themes that are of interest to us internationally. Thank you very much and thank you for having come. Chancellor de Olaf, thank you very much indeed for your welcome in the beginning of the year, the Chancery. Very happy to be with you here and be with all the teams uh, to work together. Thank you very much for your invitation to Berlin after our first uh, meeting, official meeting in Paris on the 10th of December last. Before anything else, I'd like to express France's condolences following the attack carried out by uh, an attacker in Heidelberg. Uh, and and uh, wish uh, uh, condolences to the family of the young student who was killed and a, a quick um, recovery for those who have been hurt. France um, has taken on the presidency of uh, the G7, uh, Germany has taken the presidency of the G7 and France, the president 
the Council of the European Union and uh, the uh, common agenda that we're carrying out together will allow us to coordinate several regional and international agendas. I won't uh, come back to what the Chancellor has already indicated, uh, but we wish to together build the economy of the future that be fairer, stronger, at the digital level, better regulated, uh, adapted, and uh, being able to bring our answer to climate change. And this agenda in the next semester will allow us to do so through advances in our discussions uh, in the field of uh, climate, uh, through carbon mechanism adjustment at the borders, and uh, the Friends of the Climate Club uh, uh, through the presidency of the uh, EU and that of G7, which would allow us to, in different formats, European and international, especially that of the OECD, as we've been able to do so for digital taxation. It is our will to have a um, climate agenda and uh, to put uh, together international subjects in line with uh, the latter. This is the agenda that we'll be working on together, uh, doing one ocean uh, summit uh, in Brest, uh, which will allow us to discuss the biodiversity of the oceans and push the European model. The economy of the future that I'm mentioning is also digital with a series of investment projects that we promoted in the months uh, and in the months to come on which we will continue to work. Semiconductors, artificial intelligence, just to mention a few examples, and which will lead us uh, to take forward several uh, regulations that will lend structure on the market, uh, services, uh, and also complete a common model. And we are to work together on the right investments and the right uh, economic and financial governance of our Europe in order to accompany uh, this uh, economic um, uh, endeavor. And then the Europe of values and the fights that are dear to us. We know that in the coming months we will together be managing situations which are sometimes uh, preoccupying in certain members of the European Union, and we will do so with a lot of respect and in particular the respect uh, of each uh, government sovereignly elected, but at the same time with a lot of uh, demandingness for the respect of the values of our Europe. And the fight for our values and the fight that are dear to the Europeans are also the fights uh, the, uh, that are that of a minimum European wage, uh, men, women, equality, gender equality, that will mark uh, several subjects of uh, cooperation between France and Germany. And the third major subject in my eyes, which has been widely mentioned by the Chancellor, is obviously EU playing its uh, role as a power of equilibrium in the geopolitical context. Uh, we are to work uh, together with the African continent uh, since the summit of next month between the uh, African Union and the EU, and we will have the opportunity of coming back to it this evening and to build a new partnership, whether it's a question of vaccines, uh, of climate transition, economic and financial reform with the African continent, as well as question of security and the fight against terrorism. And then we'll have the question of the Balkans, on which we want to have a common agenda in the months to come, and uh, our collabor close collaboration is very important. The Western Balkans are very important for peace and stability of Europe. And as you rightly reminded us, uh, as you perfectly mentioned, dear Olaf, this evening we'll come to this, and together we have uh, to mention the tensions which uh, are growing today on the uh, Ukrainian uh, border and the relations uh, in particular between uh, with Russia. And uh, both of us, uh, with a lot of force, are calling for a de-escalation of tensions. And here I'd like to say just how much France and Germany are united on this subject, whether it is a question of the discussion that we have within the framework of NATO, the EU, within the OSCE, but also as being the two European partners of the Normandy format. Uh, uh, and on, this, on all these subjects, we play a role to have uh, truly a Europe that is working on the control of armaments and a new order of security and stability for itself to call for de-escalation through a dialogue, a demanding dialogue with Russia, and to work for a stability through political means uh, uh, at the situation in Ukraine and in the Donbass. All of this requires unity and coordination, and that is the case between France and Germany, and that is what together we have done yesterday evening with several other European countries and allied uh, countries. Uh, uh, 
uh, of NATO, in particular the United States of America. I won't be uh, much longer, and I will uh, answer questions uh, than any other questions. And in the meantime, I'd like to thank you very much, Chancellor, for your invitation today to Berlin and for the permanent work that our ministers and our teams are doing together and uh, the friendship and work that we have uh, for each other. Bonjour, Monsieur le Chancelier. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Good morning, Mr. Chancellier. Good morning, Mr. President. BFM TV for French Television. Uh, we have um, heard your call for de-escalation of tensions. Russia today launched mal military maneuvers at the Ukraine borders between uh, Crimea. What is uh, your belief? Do you think that the Russian army can go into the territory of Ukraine in the hours or the minutes and the days, rather, to come? And if that is the case, it is difficult for us to know what is the result response of uh, France and Germany and, in general, the Europeans. Americans are deploying 8,500 uh, uh, military personnel. And is uh, France and Germany ready to uh, intervene militarily? Thank you. Thank you very much for this question. May I remind you of what we've already undertaken? What we have specified is that a military aggression that would call into question the territorial integrity of Ukraine, Ukraine will have consequences, serious consequences. We agree on this point with our NATO allies, allies and those of the European Union. Our position is very clear indeed. And we want to come to a de-escalation of the situation, and that is the reason why we have uh, marked our agreement with the direct uh, uh, discussions uh, in Geneva with the uh, United States and ourselves. In the Normandy format, for a long time, we could not meet. And it is very good that uh, such meetings actually uh, resume. And we uh, welcome the effort made by the OSCE. The OSCE, for us all, is a forum, an institution which uh, went through the Cold War, the détente, and is born out of this situation. And it is therefore absolutely essential that the sovereignty and te territorial integrity of uh, states in Europe not be threatened. And that is a very good format of discussion. With regard to the Normandy format, we've already discussed it. It is a major contribution of our two countries. And quite obviously, we have to take very seriously this situation. The situation is a serious one. But we must also very clearly say what would happen if there was a military aggression. Third point, we must uh, do everything to organize uh, meeting negotiations for de-escalation. And that is what we are doing in close consultation with uh, our allies in the United States. And uh, the situation, of course, is an evolving one in front of the difficult uh, situation. Now, with regard to the situation and the latest um, events, we remain extremely vigilant. And uh, events uh, characterized and uh, duly qualified, but uh, collectively, we are very vigilant. And in real time, we are following the situation and its um, development. And uh, as the Chancellor said, we are following things very closely. But I'd like to emphasize four points. First is uh, the unity of the Europeans and their allies. And in the face of this situation, we are totally united, grouped, and coordinated as a member state of the EU and as allies within the uh, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Secondly is our solidarity with Ukraine. Uh, we, uh, France and Solidarity and the European Commission has had the uh, uh, Germany and the, we've uh, uh, reinforced our commitment and we are ready to uh, defend from a cyber point of view, which has uh, Ukraine, which has been subject to several attacks. And in the context of this situation, we are in solidarity with Ukraine and fully committed. Third element, and the Chancellor has just emphasized this point, is to never give up the dialogue with Russia, a demanding dialogue. You know that uh, France has always pleaded for this dialogue. 
There's a di dialogue can take on different formats. There's a dialogue which lends structure. It is important within, between the United States of America and Russia, and it is good that it carries on. And there's a dialogue that will lead to meetings soon and has led to first exchanges in a format that we know between Russia and NATO. And then there is a dialogue within the framework of the OSCE. The Chancellor has just reminded the importance of this format, which was born, as I might remind you, 30 years ago from a will to build an area of uh, common um, area of uh, security, which is the consequences of values and principles that we have accepted, we Europeans, but also Russia. And amongst these principles that we have accepted, uh, that we uh, want to be guarantee of is the sovereignty of each one of us, including that of Ukraine. So within the, the, the framework dialogue with the OEC must take place. And then the normally format on the Ukrainian question, the Minsk Accord, and uh, the EU and Russia. All of these channels must be used um, completely in order to re-engage Russia in a process of de-escalation to obtain guarantees and also to allow us to build what I was able to call the new security and stability Order. That is to say, guarantees and over and beyond the Ukrainian question on security at the borders of Europe. And the fourth element that we prepare in parallel, the common reaction and retaliation in case of aggression. And as it was mentioned, if there were to be an aggression, the retaliation will be there and the cost will be very high. I have a question which is for the President and the Chancellor. You have uh, emphasized your position, but I would like to know if uh, the beginning of your cooperation isn't particularly difficult, given the fact that there are different prospects, uh, the taxonomy, for example, or again, the export of uh, weapons, the French position not the same as Germany, and the stability pact. Uh, so I'm addressing myself to both of you. Your cooperation, how is it, particularly good or not. And then, uh, Mr. President, you have worked with the former chancellor. Can you maybe make a little comparison with your cooperation with Madame, Mrs. Merkel and Mr. Scholz? Is it more difficult? Is it the same? Is it less difficult? First of all, I'd like to say that we have already worked with the Chancellor Scholz in the past because he had also to endeavor with France on many subjects of structure, in particular the European Recovery Plan. And as Minister of Finance, he had a very important role. And so it's not a discovery. We knew each other. And uh, the German-French agenda, the European agenda, is known to both, and they've been common work uh, in our successive uh, conditions. Both of us are totally convinced of the importance of the friendship between Germany and France and of the role, absolutely necessary role of this Entente to take Europe forwards. And uh, the taking office of uh, Chancellor Scholz is um, at a time when it's very difficult for our countries. The health crisis is here, which is striking our countries, which imposes that we continue to endeavor in this field. Geopolitical context and our exchange shows this, uh, uh, which is tense uh, as ever before. And uh, both of us are really driven by the awareness that together we have to build solutions. And then everything that you said is right. We have have differences because Germany is not France and France is not Germany. Is that a discovery for us? Not really. But we have one conviction, is that we have to endeavor to build compromises and never let there be any misunderstanding or disagreement take place. Uh, and on subjects of energy, our models are different because they proceed from a different history and choices that have been take, made the last 15 years, which are deeply different. However, uh, together, we have to succeed in the decarbonation of our economies and to build a greater energy sovereignty in Europe. And we will 
and, come to an, un, an understanding. The Commission made uh, comments, they, it's made comments, and we'll move forward. And I think um, that Germany has a model and a path, and France has its own, and together we must usefully be able to contribute to this European project. Historically, we've had differences um, uh, on economic and financial discussions, Néanmoins, nonetheless, euro, the euro, everything that we've been able to do on the recovery plan would not have been possible if uh, every time there was not an agreement between France and Germany. That is what we will be able to do. We'll know how to do. And we are very attached to the rules of uh, budgetary seriousness, the convergence that it imposes, and we are lucid on the necessity to in have investments uh, in our environments, be it uh, the military question, climate questions, or digital questions. It is this balance that we have to build and invent the solutions, new solutions. On uh, arms export question, I know the sensitive of the question on the German political life. This is not something new, because a few years ago with uh, Chancellor Merkel, we built common rules. The Spanish, uh, in fact, uh, joined the rules that we had built, and I'm confident in the fact that we'll always find pragmatic solutions. So yes, we are not the same, but we've never been. But, you know, how, how close we are, really, every time closer. And that's what we want to be uh, together, do together. As, uh, as far as the, the couple, that we always talk of the Franco-German or German-French couple, there were other presidents before me, other chancellors before Chancellor Scholz. And the important thing is for us to know how to build a unique relationship that will be the fruit of the friendship between our countries, of circumstances and our temperaments. And I can tell you, knowing Olaf Scholz for some years now, I'm confident of our capacity to consolidate this friendship and build together. Thank you. I, you know, I don't have much more to add. Just uh, uh, two, three comments. I also believe that the relationship between France and Germany, and or Germany and France, are extremely important for our two countries. And uh, those who are in power have to make sure uh, that this friendship continues. And that is what we will do. We have already done so together in the past. What is more, we have a mission in Europe, and this mission consists in making uh, EU a success, and that is our responsibility as far as I'm concerned and as far as the President is concerned. It's been a very long time that we've known each other. When I was mayor of Hamburg, we met, and then within the framework of the Franco-German Friendship Treaty, we worked together on cultural questions, and then I was Minister of Finance, and we worked together as well, to have a response, uh, solidarity in our countries on the European Recovery Plan, and we work together on a common concept. So we've had uh, numerous personal contacts, so I think these are excellent beginnings of work that we will do in the future, and we will succeed. Monsieur le Président, Monsieur le Chancelier, une question d'abord pour uh, Monsieur le Chancelier Scholz. Chancellor, first a question for uh, Chancellor Scholz. Uh, the refusal of your government to deliver weapons to Ukraine has led to strong criticism. Recently, the Ukrainian authorities accused Germany of betrayal. They Polish uh, uh, Prime Minister said he was worried and disappointed by German's attitude. And the Latvian uh, I mean, talked about a big mistake. Uh, so what do you say to them? And what can you tell the Ukrainians to reassure them? And another second uh, question that is for both of you. What is, according to you, the final aim pursued by Vladimir Putin in this case? Is it a question of uh, putting back the uh, old order in uh, going beyond the traditional sphere? sphere? Uh, of uh, Russia, because the strategy that putting in place uh, depends on the uh, aims that uh, are sort of um, thought to be those of Russia. 
I will answer to this uh, question uh, for Germany. Uh, the federal government has decided not uh, to develop uh, lethal weapons to Ukraine, and uh, this has its reasons. All of this is uh, due to the last um, decades. But what we want is to actively support the democratic uh, evolution in Ukraine. We wish to assist Ukraine within the framework of our international responsibilities, and we will continue to do so. We wish for Ukraine to remain a country of transit for gas. We wish to support Ukraine to be able to sign gas delivery contracts that not be prey to vicissitudes. So we are committed, we are committed, namely for hydrogen, renewable energies, and we are committed uh, alongside Ukraine and all these uh, offer great opportunities and Ukraine knows that it can count on Germany. What is more, I think that in uh, the real uh, you know, politics, there's no point in asking what are the intentions that lie behind the flagged objectives of certain countries, uh, as we've heard about Russia. What we are doing to ensure security and peace in Europe is based on common decisions, especially within the framework of the OSCE or, again, within the framework of the uh, NATO-Russia Act, which has allowed us to enumerate a certain number of principles. And one of these principles is the respect of the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of the European countries. With regard to your question, it is not for me to uh, tell you uh, what is the final aim of Russia, but to uh, observe that there is today a multiplication of acts of destabilization against uh, several sovereign states. Uh, which were formerly part of the Soviet Union. And in parallel to the multiplication of these acts of destabilization, there is an approach which is more and more hybrid on the part of Russia. Moldavia, Ukraine, Belarusia, cyber attacks, uh, the use of uh, weapons or uh, threats of uh, immigration, military maneuvers, etc. And the situation in which we are today is not stabilized. That is the first uh, element of consequence. Uh, we're not a final uh, state. It is preoccupying for the Europeans. And it imposes this unity and the preparation of a common action joint action that would be graduated depending on the advances of these maneuvers. But it also leads uh, to having a dialogue of, dialogue of clarification with Russia because the dialogue is very important in order to lift any ambiguities. Clearly, we today can only note that uh, Russia is becoming a power of uh, disequilibrium in the ca ca Caucasian uh, and in some other regions. Herr Präsident, Herr Bundeskanzler, Sie haben President Chancellor, I have a question for you. You mentioned the different formats of consultation with uh, Russia tomorrow, and this is a first. For a long time now, the advisors of the Normandy format are going to be meeting, but very little progress has been made. And in the last weeks, we had the impression that Russia considered more that its interlocutor was the United States within the framework of NATO and not the European Union. Uh, what, what success do you think Normandy format will have? Do you not believe that uh, it will just be an alibi without any real impact. Mr. President, you are going to be talking in the days to come with President Putin. What are the demands that you will be presenting 
And why, in the end, will you not carry out this meeting with uh, Chancellor Scholz because uh, Germany has uh, the president of the G7 and you have the EU presidency and you could do it within the Normandy format. On your first question, I think, first of all, one must never give up uh, the discussion and exchange formats. Uh, you are right in saying that the results of the Normandy format are not commensurate with the expectations and the commitment that France and Germany have placed in it. Nonetheless, abandoning or giving up is uh, saying that the political solution is no longer on the table. So I think it's important for us to remain committed relentlessly. The last meeting that took place in December 2019 at the level of heads of states and governments had allowed for robust advances, and I think that the prospect of a future meeting, the meeting of our diplomatic advisors tomorrow, and the prospect of a future meeting which will be organized this time in, organized in, in Germany, I think creates positive expectations and allows us to re-engage things. And the proof of this lies in the goodwill gestures that have been made by the Ukrainians uh, on the draft uh, law, which was uh, precisely criticized by Russia, and the exchanges that uh, are there between our advisors on each of these subjects. And the question is, uh, can we create another positive dynamic? Um, I think it's important to continue in the Normandy format, because at least uh, it's it's the only means of avoiding sometimes the deaggregation, only political format, and the only way of continuing to be committed. Alongside this, there's a discussion between the USA and Russia, which started uh, more recently. Is it a good thing in eyes? Yes. It's a very good thing that the United States of America is discussing, discussing with Russia. Now, has this discussion given concrete results up until now? I haven't seen any, because a discussion with Russia is always difficult. As far as I'm concerned, uh, re -engaging, having re-engaged this in 2019 with a lot of humidity, I was able to note this. So I think it's, again, important to keep these uh, channels of discussions open, and that is what had led uh, Chancellor Merkel and myself a few months ago to push the Europeans to reopen uh, this structured uh, discussion with Russia. It is in this context and with the same will, demanding but lucid, that I will have an exchange on Friday morning with the President Putin. In it, I will not be going. Uh, it's a telephone meeting. If uh, one day a meeting, uh, the format that you've described is a totally relevant one, and uh, that uh, there should be a German French position, a Franco German position assumed together, given our responsibilities with regard to Russia. Friday, it'll be a telephone exchange, the aim of which will be to take stock of the whole situation and to try and precisely obtain visibility, uh, start a demanding dialogue, and uh, obtain clarifications on several points that have occupied us this evening and are the object today of our reflections and joint work. Es gibt in schwierigen Situationen nur eine Möglichkeit dafür zu sorgen, dass die aufgelöst werden, indem man In uh, difficult situations, we can try and come to a solution by using all the possibilities that we have, contacts, different formats. We have already mobilized uh, several of them. An der Grenze der Ukraine sprechen. Es ist auch gelungen, and uh, because we are talking about uh, the situation at the border of Ukraine, we have decided to recommit ourselves in formats that have not been used for some time. <coughs> The NATO-Russia format, the Normandy format, the direct contacts between Russia and the United States, etc. What is important is to use all of these to speak together and to make progress, if possible, to come out of the current situation. I'm very happy that we have progressed as much as we have. And I am... And I welcome the fact that our partners have accepted to use the formats that are available. We are going through difficult times, and together we must make intense progress to make, meet our objectives. Thank you. 
You were watching uh, live coverage of a press conference in uh, Berlin. Uh, the uh, German Chancellor uh, Olaf Scholz uh, welcoming uh, the French President uh, Emmanuel Macron. Uh, most of the conversation dominated uh, by the spiraling showdown over Ukraine. You just heard the German Chancellor mentioning, uh, pointing to uh, Wednesday's meeting here in Paris of the so-called Normandy format. Uh, uh, that is to say, dialogue between France, Germany, the Ukraine, and uh, Russia, uh, which uh, they have not met in over two years. That's taking place uh, on Wednesday amid the troop buildup we're seeing at the border uh, of uh, Ukraine. Uh, the French president uh, warning that if Moscow attacks, the retaliation will be there and the cost will be very high.